again, just uh, want to say good afternoon to everyone that's, that's here and welcome. Um, want to welcome all of our elected officials and our department heads that are here, and I appreciate you all being here. And of course, all of our citizens that are, you know, interested in your county government and what's going on. So I appreciate everyone here today, and we've, we've got... Um, I think a fairly uneventful agenda today, but you never know. So uh, that's what makes it exciting. So we'll, we'll, we're gonna jump into this, and this is the um, March 14th, 2023 Hardin County Fiscal Court regular voting meeting. And just a note, uh, before we start the meeting, uh, the cell phones, if you'll take those, just check those real quick, make sure they're turned off or on stun, whatever you need to do there. All right, so we will call this meeting to order and we'll start with our roll call by Squire. Brian Smith, our county clerk. Thank you. Squire Clem. Here. Squire Hicks. Here. Squire Muse. Here. Squire Pennington. Here. Squire Saltzman. Here. Squire Thompson. Here. Squire Whitehead. Here. Squire Yates. Here. Judge Tall. Here. So let's go ahead and stand for our invocation by Magistrate Chris Yates and Pledge of Allegiance Larry Hicks. Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us to conduct business of the county. We ask that you watch over us and give us the wisdom and knowledge to make wise decisions for the betterment of the county. We also ask that you watch over our first responders and our men and women who are fighting for our freedom at home and abroad. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't have a, a lot of uh, opening comments today. Just, uh, again, thanking everyone for being here and participating. Uh, a, re a quick review of the agenda today. Um, we will have uh, the typical um, approval of our minutes from the last meeting. Um, we do have an uh, informational item uh, from our conservation district that we'll, that we'll have today. And then we'll have our department uh, office reports and then some written reports that are included in the packet and any uh, citizen concerns or comments and uh, we have uh, two uh, we have one ordinance and one resolution to vote on today separately and then we have quite a few resolutions uh, an executive order and a few things like that in the consent agenda that we will <coughs> vote on and then uh, and then we'll have some comment time at the end. So um, that's the agenda. Uh, there are a few copies left up here, I believe, in that box if anybody wants, wants an agenda to, to uh, follow along. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, look at our, our um, minutes from the last meeting, which was February 28th. And so do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. So uh, a motion and second. Any discussion about these minutes? Hearing none, we're going to have a roll call, please. Squire Clem? Yes. Squire Hicks? Yes. Squire Muse? Yes. Squire Pennington? Yes. Squire Saltzman? Yes. Squire Thompson? Yes. Squire Whitehead? Yes. Squire Yates? Yes. Judge Tall? Yes. Motion passes. All right, so uh, we'll move on then to the informational item, and uh, this is a Hardin County Conservation District uh, fiscal year 2023-24 budget and plan of work. And I believe, Vincent, you're yes, going sir. to uh, fill us in on that a little bit. So thank you for being here. Vincent Thompson. Well, hello, Mr. Judge Executive and all members of fiscal court. It's good to see you all again. Many of y'all got to see you a couple of nights ago, and I hope you all enjoyed yourself. For those that weren't able to attend our banquet on Monday, uh, you have an open invitation next year to come to it. Um, several new faces on the panel, but uh, happy to see you there, and hopefully we can work together in the near future. So, 
Um, my name is Vincent Thompson. As uh, Mr. Call just said, I'm the chairman of the Hardin County Conservation District. Um, and uh, we've got our budget and our plan of work. And we also have a, a surprise uh, offering that uh, it's always well accepted in years past of the uh, dead animal removal project. And we have the check ready to be taken care of and passed over. So if we could get a photo at the end of this, I would sure appreciate that. Okay. So what are you asking us? Oh, I'm just I'm presenting the uh, budget and our plan of work. Uh, we do each of them one at a time, but uh, make sure there's no questions that you all have. Okay. Um, and uh, it also, I've heard your comment earlier, if your needs are excitement, next time I can bring my guitar. So <laughs> that's up to you all. That might be fine. That's okay. Fine. Yeah. That's completely up to you all. <laughs> no questions to entertain on the uh, budget, as you can see. Well, we're, uh, we do a very good job, in my opinion, of... Uh, being a absolutely very fiscally conscious uh, organization for our government um, and we have a lot of programs as many of you all saw at the banquet uh, give away a lot of awards to uh, students in the county uh, give away 12 scholarships um, so that's two of our main drivers of the county also uh, just getting conservation and boots on the ground to uh, make sure that our farmers and even our uh, our urban dwellers have uh, some access to that we have the tree giveaway coming up uh, this is Marsha Butterworth our coordinator I don't know if any of y'all know her or not um, we're having our tree giveaway April the 1st, and it will be at the at the uh, Hard Candy Farmer's Market. Um, I can't remember what varieties we have this year, but uh, make sure you come out and at least get a couple for your yard. That's another big project we have. Any questions or any um, comments anyone has? No fooling about the trees on April 1st? I'm, I, no not, fooling about the trees It's not a joke, I promise you. <laughs> it, they're going to be given away. A lot of them will be given away. <laughs> Thank no, you. I, I read through the report and everything, and uh, you know it's amazing how much you guys actually get done with the amount of money that you have. We, so uh, it's, yeah, it's it's impressive. So um, I appreciate you guys very much. Appreciate the compliments, and uh, the people that serve in the budget committee work very hard. To, we look at it very closely, by line by line, and I'm sure you, as you all do, um, but we uh, we do our best. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate yes, the report. <clears throat> And I will go ahead and pass this check along. And like I said, if, at the end, if y'all don't mind, to stick around for a, uh, a photo opportunity. it would be great. Yeah, we'll do that. Now, for anybody else who comes up here and speaks, that's the way it's check. done. Yeah. You have to hand us the check. Actually, bring it over here instead of over there. This way? <laughs> I guess I could have divided it up all the way, separate ways, and y'all just pulled it together. Uh, no. Just to <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. That, that helps. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If I could say one more thing about that program as well. Um, yes. So, I, sorry to take more time. If anybody's got more stuff to say, um, I've recently been uh, elected to the state board, Con Kentucky Association of Conservation District, and that we get a, a grant program. So some of that money comes from county taxpayers. Some of that comes from a grant program that's uh, been inputted with the state, and that program is uh, fast drying up, as many programs are we're seeing. Um, a lot of that was established way back when with the tobacco settlement. So uh, in the coming years, there's going to be some challenges. But as you see, we've, we, we know what we're doing. We're dealing with the money, and we're uh, very conscious of it. So I'm hoping that maybe in the coming years, the county can uh, get with us, and we can really get some local programs going for just this ordeal because mm -hmm. dead animal removal is invaluable to all of us, every county mm -hmm. citizen. Yeah, I know the, the price is going up every year. Do, do, do you know how much you're charging right now for uh, dead animal? So it seems, so Doug's Tone is the one that's doing that through, they've got a separate entity, of course, but they're the ones that are actually doing the program. Right. And I think how it goes is they draw from the funds that the county has, and as those funds deplete, the amount goes up incrementally, mm -hmm. but I don't know the exact amount. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a massive amount. It was under, no. it was under $100, I believe. Correct. The last time I looked, so... It's it's really good program, and much better than taking the animal back to the sinkhole back, which mm -hmm. is back part of the farm, and, uh, which uh, is a terrible thing to do. But people that that don't uh, yes, Can I speak? yes please. Please. I'm going to put on one of my previous hats as the <laughs> county engineer, and Judge, you and I haven't had a chance to talk about this yet, but the dead animal removal program has been something Hardin County has been doing for quite some time in, in conjunction with all the supporters that we have. And 
it, it was set up for the partly for the stormwater issue that we want to make sure we're mm -hmm. keeping the stormwater right. clean and not allowing just what you said mm -hmm. the typical maybe not so not, maybe not the best choice but a typical choice of just dragging the animal off to a location that could be close to a sinkhole or a stream and we wanted to make sure that that was they had other options right. so it has worked well unfortunately with some changes in regulations how the program started out no longer is an option for us. So that's why we changed it to having Doug's towing pick it up, take it to the landfill and dis dispose of it that way. Stephanie's now taking care of that program. But I just want to give you a little bit of background right. to it because you and I haven't talked about it. And I'm not sure how familiar you are. But we've always had a good partner here yeah. and we're very proud. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's a it's a, a great service and I I don't know how many people have that number. There's a phone number that they could call. Yes, yes sir. And uh, I don't know if you wouldn't by any chance know or have that number around. Uh, let it's on speed dial, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that bad of a farmer, but uh, I do have it available. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. That way we can have it on the camera. Yeah, just to kind of have it out there for anybody that, that might be interested. Uh, and maybe some of the magistrates may not all, um, the new ones especially, may not all have that number or, or that um, understanding of what we, you know, what we uh, are able to do. And last year that fee was $65. $65 last year, so. I don't have it uh, okay. saved. I have the original dead animal removal program we have with the bluegrass contracting, okay. but uh, I can make sure to get that passed along to y'all. Okay, well, I appreciate and that. The reason I brought that up is, I'm sorry to take more time. Yeah. Um, there are several counties in the state that have taken on the task themselves, and we have plenty of models to go on. So when we when the opportunity arises, I would love to sit down with the entire fiscal court and okay. try to get something accomplished. Yeah, and probably the best way to do that is to set set up with a committee, the respective committee, which would be public works, public works, okay, <coughs> public works committee. Great. So uh, we have the next public works committee meeting. If you're interested in that, is Monday, March 27th at 5:30, and that's on the back page of the uh, agenda there. What time was that? You said 5:30. All right. I will stop there. Thank you again. <laughs> all right. Look forward to seeing all y'all in the future. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. We'll move on to department and office reports. Uh, the first one is planning. Uh, Adam King, our director, will present. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, I've got the January and February reports from the Planning Commission. Uh, start off with a few items that went before the Planning Commission and Board of Adjustment. Uh, so up first, this was a conditional use permit uh, for Nelson Rodriguez. He's doing business as extreme polishing and detailing. Uh, it is an automotive detailing and semi-truck detailing business there. Also does quite a bit of polishing. Uh, this is out uh, at the former Leaser Electric, just west of Ronnieville on Ronnieville Road. Uh, the Board of Adjustment granted them two years to operate. Uh, next up was another uh, renewal. Uh, Carl and Wanda Edwards doing business as Glendale Gardens. And again, they'd be just west of downtown Glendale. Uh, and they have a wedding and event venue there. <coughs> uh, they were granted an additional five years. And then this is Andrea and Jamie Roberts. Uh, this is also out in the Rineville area, out on Jenkins Road. Uh, the business is known as Circle Top Farm. Uh, so they operate a dog kennel there uh, within a detached garage. Uh, they were granted an additional seven years. Um, this is, uh, was a zone change uh, from the rural residential R2 zone to the general commercial C2 zone for JCC Construction, uh, and they've purchased the former uh, Glendale Children's Home there on the south side of Gilead Church Road, just south of the Blue Oval SK site. Um, so uh, their proposal was to do an RV park here to help fund the rehabilitation of all these buildings. Uh, JCC Construction is sort of in the historic preservation business, um, so they came to the Planning Commission and were approved to do an RV park 
uh, 30 spaces uh, to help fund the rehabilitation. So uh, these are, they took us on a tour, um, also got some drone photography that Nick uh, with engineering took for us. Uh, so some of the buildings, you know, there have been fires over the year. Uh, thankfully they are uh, masonry buildings so they couldn't really burn them down. Um, but this was one that they've already done quite a bit of work in. Um, this is the old gym out front. So kind of their initial thought here was that they might be able to do some sort of wedding and event meeting space in that to start bringing in some money in addition to the RV park uh, to help rehabilitate the larger campus building in the back. And again, there's their development plan. Uh, so thankfully they had a lot of existing infrastructure as far as roads that they're gonna be able to capitalize on for that RV park. Uh, going to have to put in a large septic system. The sewer in this area is a forced main they couldn't tap into. Uh, Planning Commission also did a zone change from R2 to C2. This is the former Royal Oaks Mobile Home Park. Uh, this is on South Dixie, uh, between South Dixie and I-65. Uh, they've been approved for a 72 space RV park and it will connect to Hardin County Water District number two's uh, sewer system there. And then this wasn't a hearing, uh, but essentially uh, it was an amended development plan that the Planning Commission looked at. This is the Country Club Golf Homes uh, down on Hodgenville Road just off the golf course. Uh, so back in the early 2000s, they had been approved to build <coughs> two fourplexes and a single duplex uh, the fourplex units didn't sell as well because the two interior units only had windows on the front and the back. So they came to the Planning Commission to request to amend that development plan to instead build two duplexes instead of another fourplex. Uh, and that was approved. Looking at the various land use applications thus far for the year, uh, eight subdivision flats, uh, one zone change, uh, six conditional use permits, and three variances. Looking at plats and lots, uh, 12 plats recorded for the year. That's up from this time last year when we were at nine. Number of new lots is at 11 new lots, and that's also up from 2022 when we were at three. Uh, permits, we've issued 63 building permits through the end of February, and 194 electrical permits. Again, electrical permits, it's a little different because we do electrical permits also for LaRue County uh, in the cities of West Point, Sonora, Upton, and Vine Grove. Uh, so that's driving that electrical number a little higher there. Single family dwelling, we're at eight new homes for the year. Uh, and there's the map of those locations. Uh, inspections, so we've done 237 final inspections. That includes both building and electrical. 39 footers, 97 rough inspections. I uh, just wanted to update you all on the comprehensive plan update process. Uh, so at the beginning of the month, we did have a meeting out in Glendale at the Old East Harden Middle. Had over 200 people sign in, uh, got a lot of good feedback. Uh, I think it was a productive event. Generally anything in Glendale draws a crowd. Uh, took a lot of questions about Blue Oval took a lot of questions about the various uh, Kentucky Transportation Cabinet road projects, also a lot of questions about the sewer, uh, but it's good to just see community members wanna be involved and help plan for the future of the county. And then lastly here, we've got our fifth and final open house on what I'll call our road show. Uh, that is gonna be at Woodland Elementary on Wednesday, March 29th, 4.30 to 6.30. Uh, the focus of this open house is going to be on the northern part of the county. Uh, so Radcliffe, Vine Grove, West Point, and Colesburg. Now obviously my office only has jurisdictions for the unincorporated parts of the county. So anything having to do with the city limits of Radcliffe or Vine Grove or West Point here, it's outside of our jurisdiction, but we'd be looking at growth and development around the fringe there of those city limits. That's all I've got. Happy to answer any questions y'all might have. And I'm really glad to see the restoration of that uh, children's home, former mm -hmm. children's home. It's a shame what happened to that facility. 
But do you have any idea what their plans are for the use of it once it's restored? Um, no, they do have an immediate plan for a wedding type event venue there in the front gym. Uh, they do, they are looking for an end user that would be seeking a campus facility uh, kind of feel that they've got going there, uh, but they didn't have a tenant yet, um, so to be determined. Obviously, as those buildings are rehabilitated, uh, they will need the necessary building and electrical inspections. We'd also be amending those development plans based on the use to determine how much parking's needed, how much handicap parking's needed, et cetera. So that one's gonna be a work in progress for quite a while. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Appreciate it. Next up is engineering. <clears throat> Stephanie Gibbons, Director of Public Works. Good afternoon, court members. Um, I do have some information on the dead animal removal before we move into the presentation. Um, just to kind of give you all an idea, uh, for the month of February last month, we collected 31 different animals. Um, 22 of those cows, two of those calves, three horses, two goats, and two alpacas. So this program is utilized um, on a regular basis because that's not uncommon to have around that number almost every month, at least. Um, the phone number for Hardin County Animal Removal Services is 270-734-1336, and they will respond to any call uh, within the same day to 24 hours. Um, so by statute, they have 48 hours to respond to the call, but they're usually there within 24 hours to get it taken care of for you, to give you a little information on that. So for the 2023 erosion sediment control inspections, we had 133 for the month of January, and we had 142 for the month of February. That's a total of 275 year to date. The annual inspections for that, as you can see, the last seven years, um, they kind of go up and down quite often. Now, of course, the last couple of years, they were in pretty close, and I, I expect for them to be on target so far for what we have this year. Our notice of violations and stop work orders. Um, for January, we had one notice of violation and zero stop work orders. And for February, we had zero for both of those as well. The annual in, uh, notice of violations and stop work orders, you can see in comparison again for the last seven years. And year to date, we still have just the one notice of violation and one stop work order. Our public concerns would be issues with drainage, erosion concerns, floodplain permitting, new construction and sinkholes. On our public response calls, we had four calls in the month of January and we had two notices in the month of February. So year to date, of course, that's six calls so far. On our rainfall so far this year, January we had 5.56 of inch and 3.6 um, inches for the month of February. This next slide, you can kind of see the comparison where we had a pretty wet January and stayed pretty much the same uh, year to date for uh, the month of February. Our reporting for code enforcement, January and February activities reports. In the month of January, um, there were six cases received. One case was closed and there are still 24 outstanding cases as of July, January 31st, I'm sorry. And then in the month of February, we had seven new cases that came in, four cases were closed, and we still have 30 outstanding cases of February 28th. This is kind of a new slide that I have put in here just to kind of give you all some information about um, some of our recycling totals. So this was um, 2022 recycling totals. There was 346 trailer runs for all of our recycling materials. So the seven locations that we have out in the community, this is, it generated 346 runs, and it also was 451,952 pounds of recycled materials brought into those trailers. So if, if you think that you're not contributing to the amount, every little bit helps. So um, this is a good program, and the, the public love to keep it there. So 
uh, it, it's um, constantly, there are people there, constant traffic at all of our locations. <clears throat> On the shredding events that we do, um, so far for this year, January, February, and March, we've had uh, a total of 49 vehicles and 55 bags of shredding to come in. And you can see the individual months there for um, January, February, and March. An upcoming event that we have, our next shredding event is going to be April the 3rd. And again, this is at the Hardin County Road Department, 501 Bacon Creek Road, and the times are specific to 1 to 2 p.m. So it's very important to show up during those time frames um, to get your shredding bags taken care of. And our next upcoming event is the e-scrap event. This is a um, very valuable event that we have. Uh, takes care of all electronics that people are wanting to get rid of. Uh, this is a free event for all Hardin County residents. It's on a Saturday, April 29th from 8 to 2 p.m. And this is located at AGC Automotive America's plant on Highway 62. So we do have plenty of information and flyers within the building and on the website if anybody needs additional info on certain things they're trying to get rid of. Any questions? Questions, anyone? Do you, do you know how many locations, recycling locations we have right now? I, I'm not sure that everybody un, understands. We have seven. Seven? Okay. Yes. And, um, you know, maybe a, a, we could put a map up at some point. Next, we actually have that on the um, website. Oh, good. Um, they okay. can put in their address, and it gives them the closest location to them. Great. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up, Road Department. Um, Dwight Morgan, Road Supervisor, I don't think is here, so Michael Steck will fill in for him. Replacement today. Good afternoon, members of the court. How are you all? Good. 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 So I have uh, the January and February, February report for the Road Department. Um, it looks like in that we have sold 16 new encroachment permits compared to 18 encroachment per permits sold in January and February of 2022. We've installed uh, 44 new road signs and replaced 12 or repaired 12 others. <clears throat> Some of our daily work activities have included but aren't limited to pothole, re pothole patching. We've repaired 447 potholes um, I would like to say something about pothole patching real quick. We have not actively set out just to, for the intent of checking our roads for pothole patching. Potholes are a nightmare during this time of year, freezing, thawing water. We, you know, um, hopefully when the weather gets more standardized that we can do that, we'll set out just with the intent of pothole patching. So some people have asked me about, hey, I saw a pothole patch here, but they didn't get them all. Um, we, we can go out and spot patch a bad hole here and there. All of our crews that are out doing other jobs, they carry some pothole patch stuff with them in case they come across a large hole, they'll fill it while they're there. Um, so that's, if you, if you get that call, or if you know somebody, or you, you yourself might have seen, oh, they patched a hole here, but they missed this one. So. Those guys might have been out and just saw a large hole and they fixed it while they were in the area. And then the other ones have just been complaints that either came through text my gov or through the office or whatever. We will take care of those as they come in. <clears throat> uh, we've done shoulder repair and ditching on uh, numerous roads, some of which to include Amish Road, Middle Creek Road, Nackey Pike, Upper <coughs> Colesburg, WC Quiggins. We've been actively trimming trees and mow trimming and some of those roads include Bacon Creek Road, Center Point Road, Horseshoe Bend, Pleasant Hill, Eastview Road, and Wonderland Cabin Road. Uh, we've done numerous dig outs, base, base failure repairs on Bear Oak Court, Bear Oak Court, James Duval Lane, Majestic Way, Mayfield Court, Ro Roy Road, and Whistling Oaks Boulevard. Uh, we've repaired one sinkhole that fell into the edge of the road at Acres School Road, and we've done numerous tile, tile replacements underneath the roads to include James Duval Road, Majors Drive, Middle Creek Road, Second Street, and Tab Road. And then we had one snow event 
in January that we we were all out working on. It was and we that totaled for 169 tons of salt usage during that snow removal. <coughs> so any questions? The, the new signs is that from the storm majority of them? Uh, no. So this is January, February. Obviously, we're still that storm was in March. So those <coughs> those will be on the next report. But yes, we did lose a lot of a lot of signs during that. I uh, actually found one today. Then, you know, some of that stuff, if it doesn't get called and reported, we don't know about it until one of either myself or an employee drives by and just finds it. But um, it's currently what we're working on is storm pickup. We've been doing that ever since the what was that the third March third. You know, I was telling Mr. Tall, Judge Tall, that uh, I was hoping to get done with that today. So. Do you have an idea when you? might start uh, patching these potholes? Uh, hopefully when the weather stays above freezing, we'll, we'll send out and try and hit, we'll, we'll take our snow routes and we'll go around every road in, in our snow routes and try and repair the potholes. It's, it's going to be a big job because there's a whole lot it of always is. out there. It always is. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's the biggest complaint I get is, you know, the roads are just falling through. so. And the other question I have is, uh, when would the chipping crew, you think, start chipping? Are you referring to total patching? Huh? Are you referring to our total no, patcher? chipping these limbs and trees and everything we got on the side of the road. That's currently what we're working on. We're picking that stuff up right now. So if you know of a place where there was a tree that fell within the right of way and we haven't gotten to it yet, I encourage you to, you need to report that to the office. Cause it, ha it has been reported. It has been reported. Then, it, then I'm sure they're getting, they're, if they didn't get to it today, they're going to get to it tomorrow. Because okay. we're wrapping that list up. All right. Thank you. I just want to say that I don't envy you and your <laughs> job and, or Dwight Morgan because the number one phone call I'm going to get and the number one complaint is about the roads. And I just want to commend you for for the work that you do and, and thank you for, for doing a great job for us and with what with the resources you have available. Well, thanks, you I know, appreciate you that. You have to consider that. When you consider, you know, when is my road gonna be repaved, resurfaced or patched, you know, we have to consider manpower and resources and all that too. So mm -hmm. I just wanna thank you for what you do. Thank you and mm -hmm. thanks to our employees that work for us. M Mr. Stack, um, many comments about how quickly you were able to get the fallen trees out of the road and have the road open. That's appreciated. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tech, I'd just like to clarify on the chipping and things like that. We're not picking up brush for the for the people that, that bring it to the road like they do in the cities. I just want No, we, we do not offer a curbside right. pickup. Right. I, I just I just wanted to kind of clarify right. that it may have been a little confusing. Yeah, what I what we go around and pick up are, are trees that fell in our roadway or in our right of way so that when it becomes right away mowing time, you know, right. as spring and the grass starts to grow, that we aren't tearing, those, those guys aren't tearing up equipment or not being able to mow the right away because of obstructions. Right, I just wanted to make sure that the county didn't, didn't get a little confused that we do what the city does. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. Just a note too that uh, some some people have called and commented. There's um, there's a big effort right now to repave the roads that are available and the money that we have to do that. And um, our contractor has four crews, if that's correct, Mr. Steck, four crews out there right now. <coughs> uh, maybe not today because it's cold, but whenever they're able to, there's four of them running. So they're uh, making up some ground or some street, if you will, um, in this case. So it's uh, some good things happening in our county with our roads, that's for sure. Um, the written reports uh, you, you've seen or you're able to see on animal control, if there's any questions uh, that you have, uh, Mike McNutt, the director, is, is here. And uh, also emergency management if you uh, have any questions about that report. I do want to take the moment, since I said the, word, the words emergency management, uh, as we all know, we had, uh, I don't know, what are they calling it, a 20-year 
wind event or something like that. Um, I've never seen one like it in my lifetime, and I'm pretty old. I don't know if I'm as old as you are, E.G., but I'm pretty That's old. Yeah. <laughs> Shots fired. It was kind of like Ike. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was almost like a hurricane, right? Mm. It lasted for so long. Uh, but I, I just want to publicly commend um, our departments that were associated with that. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say enough about our 911 center and all the people that, um, with Mike Leo and all, all his crew that, that worked that mm -hmm. evening, uh, stopped by there about 4 o'clock and walked in, and it was, uh, there was a lot going on. Um, uh, our, our new uh, emergency uh, management director, uh, Joey Scott, as soon as I turned the corner, I saw him, and he had a phone in each ear, you know, <laughs> so I, I knew, I knew things were happening, and then I stepped into the room, and it was, uh, there were just continuous calls, and did you ever get a full count on how many that came in? Just a thousand, just a few hours. In just a few mm -hmm. hours, a thousand calls, mm -hmm. and obviously we're not set up for that kind of volume, but I think they did a fantastic job of working through all of those and answering those calls. So um, commend them, and of course our um, uh, emergency medical service, our ambulance service, and um, really appreciate what uh, all of those folks did. And and sometimes it was weren't wasn't the safest thing to be out there, you know, mm -hmm. on the roads, trying to get to the to uh, where the accidents were and, and such. So uh, and then of course our road crew uh, out there working hard to um, open up places for our emergency vehicles to go and people just to get home. So, uh, it, you know, it was just a big team effort and I, I just really appreciate everybody. They were, uh, I think I even saw the sheriff in there uh, helping out in 911 center and, and uh, you know, trying to get the people dispatched and, and such because it was so hectic. So I, it was just, a, I think, overall a county uh, service effort and I, I just am very proud, you know, to be a part of it. So thank you all very much for what you did. Can I expand on that? Uh, Judge Tall, uh, along with, with kudos to our, our county uh, workers and our first responders, I just want to thank our utilities for bringing the light back and getting the power <laughs> on. I know Nolan RECC alone had over 14,000 members out of uh, electricity. <laughs> And I know they had help from outside co-ops, but that is no small feat. And I just want to just want to thank them and, and and let them know how much I appreciate uh, their efforts. No, Lynn, as well as uh, KU. Thank you, Patsy. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you bringing bringing the, uh, them up because they they did a fan. I don't know how they do it. <coughs> uh, really, takes a takes a whole team. Yes. Everybody it does. So. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Um, so uh, the next item on the agenda is any citizens' concerns or comments. Um, so we'll open that up if anybody has a concern or comment that you want to bring before the court today. All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the next agenda item. Um, it, this is... Um, and uh, first one on, on the ordinance and resolutions that we need to vote on today. It's a second uh, and a final reading of ordinance uh, number 329-5, series 2022. And this, uh, we, we uh, talked about this at our last meeting, at our first reading. And it, it, it has to do basically with some grants um, uh, $50,000 grant and then another $175,000. I believe that's the, uh, our clerk's election equipment that's uh, part of that. Um, also, we have um, a settlement, an opioid uh, a settlement of $642,000 that's included in that. Uh, some housekeeping of uh, Radcliffe 911, some mineral tax stuff. And it's really um, uh, cleaning up several things and, uh, and just taking care of, of this budget amendment number five. Um, and so after the first reading, we sent that off to um, DLG. They, they had to sign it and then, and they did. And now we just need a motion to approve it. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? 
All right, uh, hearing none, if we'll have a roll call. Squire Clem? Yes. Squire Hicks? <laughs> yes. Squire Muse? Yes. Squire Pennington? Yes. Squire Saltzman? Yes. Squire Thompson? Yes. Squire Whitehead? Yes. Squire Yates? Yes. Judge Tall? Yes. Motion passes. Our next one is a resolution, uh, it's number 48, and it's relating to the participation in a settlement, another settlement, really, of opioid litigation. And this had to do with, uh, I think it's Allergan or Allergen, uh, CVS, Teva, Walgreens, and Walmart. Uh, this is basically a phase two of the one that we were just talking about in that budget amendment we just voted on. And um, we don't, at this time, know how much this will be, but uh, the main thing that we're doing here is that we are jumping into this and we will um, uh, throw our county in, into the hat here and we'll see what kind of money we get out of it. And uh, there are restrictions around this. We, we don't get, uh, from my understanding, we don't get this money and we can just, goes into our general fund. We, we do have <coughs> special things that we can spend it on. And it's around drugs, <coughs> basically, and how we can train people better, how we can um, help in any way that we can to uh, reduce uh, the issue that we have with op opioid addiction. Okay, so that's what uh, this one is, and um, open to for a motion. Motion, motion to approve. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion about this one? Okay, hearing none, we have a roll call. Squire Clem? Yes. Squire Hicks? Yes. Squire Muse? Yes. Squire Pennington? Yes. Squire Saltzman? Yes. Squire Thompson? Yes. Squire Whitehead? Yes. Squire Yates? Yes. Judge Tall? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, we'll move on then to our consent agenda. And again, uh, as usual, these are uh, more um, items that, that we usually would not need to go through in individually. We can kind of lump these all together. Um, and as I've told and, and spoken to the magistrates, if there's ever one that, as they're reviewing this before our meeting, uh, one that they really want to pull out of here to vote for, of course, we're, we're able to do that at any time. But we do have uh, uh, payrolls that uh, we need to, that's, that's in here that we'll be voting to approve. Uh, March uh, claims, which are all, are all of our expenses so far in March. We have an executive order number four that's <coughs> related to authorization to perform marriages and per the KRS and uh, that's for Magistrates Yates and Whitehead, and so approval for them to perform those marriages. Uh, we have an uh, approval of resolution number 45. This is relating to uh, amendment number four of the Intergovernmental Support Agreement, and this is with Fort Knox, uh, U.S. Army Cadet Command, and Hardin County EMS. Uh, this, this, this one basically is um, agreeing to support their training that they do. I think it's in the summer, primarily, right, that we do that. Run June 1st, the Okay. Thank you. And then we have uh, resolution number 46 relating to, and, and um, oh yeah, 46 relating to approval of financial transfers, so kind of some typical budget transfers. We have number 47. Uh, approval of a contract uh, with um, in uh, 911 area for their copiers. It's just a kind of a re-up on that contract. And then the next two are resolutions 49 and 50, and these relate to the road department, uh, the business manager, uh, moving from uh, non-exempt to exempt, and uh, also a, a pay grade increase there and some extra responsibilities for that job description. We also have a number 51. This is relating to approval of uh, our public relations officer uh, job description and really it's just a name change to try to make this a little bit more understandable, I think, for uh, Hardin County citizens going from a title of community support coordinator to public relations officer. 
And of course, that's Megan McDougal sitting right over there. So if you haven't met her, see her after the meeting. Um, we also want to approve resolution number 52 relating to approval of EMS personnel. And this is where uh, we had an opening for a business specialist and we uh, hired Pam Kellogg. Uh, approval of Resolution 53 relating to approval of Dr. Bell as EMS Medical Director. And as uh, some of you may know that for our uh, ambulances to do what they do, we have to have, by KRS, we have to have a medical director that oversees, sees some of the activities there with, with the uh, drugs that they have and that they utilize. And so we're extending his, his employment agreement and uh, it comes in about $24,000 that we pay him to help us with that. And let's see, what else we got? We've got the uh, Resources and Community Support Committee. Uh, this from uh, Magistrate Patsy Whitehead and E.G. Thompson. And uh, so they had some really good minutes and just, uh, um, I was there at that meeting and uh, just had some, some, some good information that was uh, passed on to us and uh, from the health department, um, CASA, um, just some others, some citizens that came in and had some comments. So it was a good, really good meeting. Okay, so that covers all the stuff that's in that consent agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve it? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, are there, is there any discussion around any of these? All right, hearing none, we can have roll call. Squire Clem. Yes. Squire Hicks. Yes. Squire Muse. Yes. Squire Pennington. Yes. Squire Saltzman. Yes. Squire Thompson. Yes. Squire Whitehead. Yes. Squire Yates. Yes. Judge Tall. Yes, motion passes. Okay, so let's move on and we have some comment sections now and we'll, um, uh, our, our uh, county attorney, Jenny Oldham, I believe you have something to share. I do. Just um, my audit, my agreed upon procedure should be attached there and I would just note that there were no exceptions. This is a new process for county attorneys and um, as part of that I volunteered um, because that's I think how you learn and if you mess up they will teach you. Um, but um, I noted there are no exceptions. So if you need anything else on that, just let me know. That's all. Congratulations on Thank that. You. Yes. All right. Uh, our magistrates, um, any comments? And we'll start with Magistrate Chris Yates. Uh, Judge, I just wanted to echo some of your comments earlier as far as our first <coughs> responders and the response to the windstorm. Um, and you mentioned 911, and that was one of the things that I wanted to talk about is. You know, um, when you see the police officers out there and the EMS out there, 911 who's dis is the ones who has dispatched them there. I was listening to the scanner, and I was amazed at the calls and how well they was uh, coordinating and uh, dealing with the, the amount of calls coming in. It was amazing. The scanner never shut up, <laughs> but we got through it. Um, also, as uh, Patsy mentioned, uh, you know, thank you to the linemen out there who got our electric back on quickly. So thank you to all the first responders and their job well done. Um, our next emergency service committee meeting is uh, March 23rd at 5.30 p.m. I will be out of town that day, but my co-chairman will be there to take care of it for me. So thank you, Mr. Pennington. That's all I have, Judge. All right. Thank you very much. Magistrate Kenny Saltzman. I have no comments, sir. Thank you. Magistrate Patsy Whitehead. Yes, I, um, I have just a brief, a brief comments about the committee meetings, and, and I guess this is more for those folks that are watching this on um, our local Hardin County Educational TV channel and online. We talk about these committee meetings, and we invite the public to attend, and I think it's amazing, it's awesome, as, as Judge Tall mentioned, I've had a lot of response in the resources and community support committee meeting. Um, folks with all kinds of concerns have been coming to the meeting. What I want to mention though is you need to be on the agenda for that meeting to speak. 
And that might be something that I haven't communicated as well as I should. Um, we have it posted on when the meetings are, and, 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 and you know that, but some folks don't understand that you need to contact the committee chairperson, and if you're not sure who the chairperson is, just call the Hardin County uh, government, they'll, they'll help you, or, or call me, I'll help you with that, but, and ask to be on the agenda and you have a limited time to speak, but your concerns and issues will certainly be heard. So just keep that in mind, just as you come into fiscal court and talk about things that are on the agenda for that day, you need to be on the agenda at the committee meetings in it as well. And that's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Patsy. Mm -hmm. Magistrate Fred Clem. Uh, the next finance committee meeting will be Tuesday, March the 21st at 5.30 p.m. across the hall. And just want to remind folks, please don't drink and drive and don't text and drive. Thank you. Uh, Magistrate Aaron Pennington. No comments. Thank you. And Magistrate E.G. Thompson. I have no comments today. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Magistrate Larry Hicks. I have no comment. Thank you. And Magistrate Kenny Muse. Uh, just a couple new things going on in the Vine Grove area. Uh, Y'all may know they're getting ready to build a new dog park at the Radcliffe Optimus Park. And they got plans to construct a new disc golf course there also. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, well, um, just want to remind everyone that our next fiscal court meeting is March 28th in two weeks. Um, again, a reminder that that meeting is later in the day. It's at 5.30 p.m. Um, these uh, other um, public meetings and committee meetings are on, on the uh, back page of, of this agenda, so if you want to check that out, again, all those meetings are um, at 5.30 p.m. right across the hall up here on the third floor. And, um, you know, next week's a big a big meeting week. There's three of those meeting next week, so feel free to attend any one of those or all of them if you'd like. So I uh, just want to thank everyone as we wrap things up today. And so is there a, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Any objections? All right. Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. No